Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about generating code coverage reports in Unity. Now code coverage reports are a nice tool to have for testing your game, whether you're testing your game through unit testing or more traditional play testing. And these code coverage reports are going to give you detailed information about what lines of code are being called when you're playing your game. Now it's not an end all be all solution and just because you have 100% code coverage does not mean that you're actually testing everything that can logically happen in your game. It basically just shows you that that block of code is being called and it's kind of meant to highlight what code that you still need to make tests for and it can also show you code that is just maybe never called in your game. And if this code's never being called in your game, then maybe it's something that you can remove and kind of clean up your code base a little bit. So code coverage reporting is an extremely useful tool to have, but just remember that it's only part of the picture and it's up to you as the developer to use these tools to your advantage to make sure that you're properly testing for all cases of crazy things that may happen in your game. So in today's video, I'd just like to show how we can add code coverage reports to our Unity projects and how we can actually run these reports when we run our unit tests or when we just play our game in the editor. But before I do that, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about new features coming to the Unity game engine. And if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down in the comment section below. So anyways, I've opened up my Bloons Tower Defense project that I'm working on here and I'm gonna be showing off adding code coverage to this project. So first thing that we're gonna to do to get the code coverage stuff, we'll just go up to Window and Package Manager. And so the code coverage package that we're gonna be adding, you'll see that it is a preview package. So if you're using Unity version 2019, you can go to this Advanced tab and click the Show Preview Packages. However, if you're using Unity version 2020 or newer, you actually have to go into the Project Settings in the Package Manager section and there it will be an option to enable preview packages. Once you do that, you'll see the code coverage package under the Unity registry section, and you can just go ahead and click the install button down at the bottom right corner. Once you've done that, you can go up to window and general, and then you'll see right under your test runner is your code coverage window. And I like to dock it just right next to my test runner and my console down here. Now the first time you open up the code coverage window, it'll prompt you to actually enable code coverage and so you can just click on the setting that opens up the preferences where you can actually enable the code coverage setting. Once you do that, you'll just have to restart Unity. Once you do restart Unity, it's actually gonna give you a warning saying that editor performance may be impacted a little bit because of the code coverage preview package. So you can just go ahead and accept that and continue on into Unity. So now once we're in Unity, we can go ahead and set some of the settings for our code coverage reporting. Of course, here it's gonna ask for a folder location for where you want the results and the history to be stored. You'll see that I've just created this code coverage folder, which I've put that in. For the included assemblies, basically this just has all the assemblies that are currently in my project. And so you can just click the select button here and you can select which assemblies you do and do not want to test. And then I just have the rest of the defaults set up like this. If you do want some more information on any of these, you can just hover these and there's a little tool tip for you. So now if we actually want to run the test for our unit tests, it's extremely easy. We can just come over to our test runner here and then I'll just double click on the top project here and you'll see it's gonna go ahead and run all the unit tests. You see that it does take a little bit time to actually generate the report. It's just going to open up the files in a file explorer here and then you'll see that if we actually open up the index.html report, then you'll see this code coverage report that we have here. And so you'll see that my code coverage is not really that great. Um, this is basically just the edit mode tests, which I pretty much only am uh, testing a couple classes here. So you see that there's the balloon properties and game statistics. These are pretty much the main ones that I'm uh, actually testing for. So if we say go into this game statistics one here, now we can actually get a full breakdown. We basically see the code here. And if it's green, that basically means that that line of code is being called. And over here in the number, you see that this line is being called eight times. And so we can kind of scroll down and then we'll see down at the bottom, we'll see that this uh, function for void set game statistics is never being called. So maybe this is something that we want to create a test for. All right, so I've opened up my game statistics tests here and we can scroll down to the bottom. I actually already have created a test here. So we can just uncomment that and you'll see that I have this test game statistics here. And by doing that, you'll see that we actually are calling the set game statistics method. So now I'll come back to Unity and I'll go ahead and run all my tests again and this is going to increase 
include that new test that I just generated. I just noticed I got this interesting bug where I got this IO exception sharing violation on this path. Not sure exactly what that's all about, but I was able to fix that just by going to the code coverage here and clicking generate from last, which will regenerate a new report based on the um, last tests that we ran. So now if we just come back to our HTML report, you'll see that we actually have this code coverage history graph here. So you'll see that our initial line coverage was 44.3%. And if we move over to the next report, you'll see that it's 45.7%. So our code coverage did go up a little. You see that if we come down here to the game statistics class here, you'll see that our code coverage is now sitting at 100%. And we do have this little graph here basically showing that kind of upward trajectory. So now if we actually go into our game statistics report, you'll see that all these significant lines of code are now being called in here. So now that's great for unit testing, but what if you don't have unit testing set up in your project? Is there still ways that you can test your code coverage for your game? Yes, there absolutely is. So you'll see that in the code coverage window, there's this um, little start recording button. So if you click on that, then it's going to basically from now on going to be recording all our code coverage. So if we actually go enter play mode here, and so once we're in play mode, we can kind of start testing around with our game. So for example, I'll start the new round and we'll just kind of let all these uh, balloons start to flow through and we'll just let them uh, make their way all the way to the end. All right, so we kind of just tested out a basic little round in our game. So I'll go ahead and exit out of play mode here and then I'll click the stop recording button. So you'll see that the code coverage is going to prepare a report for us. And then you'll see that if we actually open up the index.html report, you'll see that we now have much more code coverage than we did before. So we actually have 77.1% now. And that's because when I'm actually testing my game in play mode, you know, much more of the code is being ran than just the couple edit mode tests that I have set up. And then so again, we can go into say, maybe this game controller class and scroll down and see what things are being called and what things aren't being called. So for example, we have this decrement money method. And so in that little testing that I did, I never you know, purchased a new tower or anything like that. So it didn't actually decrement the money. So maybe that might be something interesting for us to test. So again, we can just click the start recording and enter play mode here. Once we do enter play mode, I'll just start a new round. And I don't have the visuals all set for the building of towers just yet. Um, but if we click on a dart tower to build that and then you know click somewhere on the map, you see that our money now decrements to $400. So I'll just let the rest of the balloons flow out of here and we can go check our reports. Okay, so I will exit out of play mode and stop the recording. Um, once I've stopped the recording, this just is going to automatically generate the report because I do have the auto generate report selection selected. So we can come back here and you'll see that my last one was at 77.1%. And now we are up to 80.1%. So now if we were to go to the game controller, you'll see that the game controller um, has some more code coverage than before. And you'll see that this decrement money is now all in green, meaning that this has been called. And then if we scroll down, you'll see that we're actually not testing for a game over state. And now that could be something that we might wanna test for in a future play test. But anyways, I hope this gives you all a good introduction onto code coverage testing and why it might be useful. Again, don't use it as the end all be all and just keep in mind that even if you do have 100% code coverage, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're testing for you know, all different situations that you may run into in your game, but it can just be a good rule of thumb to help you see you know, what code is being called and what code is not. So anyways, if you did find today's video helpful, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about new features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those all down in the comment section below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.